What's up, C3 New York? <laughs> Happy New Year! We have made it to 2021. Are we excited that we made it to the new year? I mean, listen, y'all. We know what 2020 was, and we know some of the effects that still are, uh, but we're believing God to do something new in the new year. And so I'm so excited that I have the opportunity, the incredible opportunity to serve you all uh, this weekend. Can I just say how much I love your pastors, Josh and Georgie, and uh, from Texas, a land that is rife with guns, <laughs> do not mess with my friends, pastors Josh and Georgie. If I fly to New York, it's because things are cool. But if I drive to New York, I'm going to pop that trunk. And y'all don't want that smoke, so I'm just saying... Don't mess with my friends, okay? I'm excited to have the opportunity to serve, and so uh, wherever you're watching from, uh, I'm grateful that you chose on the first Sunday of the new year uh, to tune in and get a word from God about this year. And so uh, I have what I feel is a prophetic word, something that God has been talking to us here uh, at Embassy City about, and I'm glad I get to share it with you. The two words that he's been sharing with me and with us is Master Reset. And I want to talk to you uh, about what a Master Reset for the year 2021 might be and do for you. So if you're taking notes on this message, it's very, very simple. The title of the message is Master Reset. And I want to give you the scripture that we got the whole context from. It's found in Isaiah Chapter number 43, verse number 19, here's what it says. For I am about to do something new. If you're an old school King James, a new King James, you know it as, behold, I will do a new thing. This is God talking to Israel. Uh, and as Gentiles engrafted in, we get to participate in what the word was for Israel. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. I want to talk to you today about a master reset. Bow your heads, let's pray, and then I'm jumping right into this. You ready? Father God, give us the reset we need. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so I want to start off by giving you the definition of this reset. The definition of this reset is a hard reset, also known as a factory reset or master reset, is the restoration of a device to the state it was in when it left the factory. Now, if we just stopped right there, that's already good preaching. It's not even a verse, but just by definition, you can preach that. But it goes on to say this, all settings applications, and data added by the user are removed. That last line I need to say again. All settings, applications, and data added by the user are removed. So here's a question I need to ask you. Uh, are you down for a reset? Are, are, are you ready for a reset? Yeah. Are there some things that you have downloaded as a part of what you had to do to survive 2020? Are you cool with some of that being erased? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Not only are there some things going to be downloaded and erased by the user, but the ab user too. Some of us have involuntarily had some things downloaded that we did not ask for. But there's some situations that just happen to come upon us in life that we need to get erased. So uh, I, I want to talk to you about um, four points that I believe you need to have in order to embrace uh, this hard master reset. 
And if you don't get these points, then don't get excited about the reset. There's some people that get really, really excited about the titles until they hear what they have to apply. And then they're like, oh, I didn't know you needed us to. I didn't know you actually wanted us to do something. Right. Would you like to make a million dollars in the next six months? Everybody's like, yes. Then they're like, hey, you need to get a job. And they're like, oh, a job. I thought it was just going to come straight to me. So I want to give you these four points because I believe in these points that you get the context to how you feel about this master reset. It's going to literally turn your entire life upside down. Four points. Here's the first one. Please write this down because you need to have this. And if you get this, you almost got everything. Point number one, God already started something new in you. That's the first thing you need to know. Is God started something new in you? I'm going to say it one more time. God already started something new in you. And here's the thing. He didn't need to ask your permission before he started it. He did not need to check in with you to see if you wanted this reset that he started. He just started it. How many people have a cell phone? And you get automatic updates to your phone. Yeah. Have you ever been using your phone and while you were looking at it, um, so you saw some things started shading and moving around in there and you were like, what? what? I did not ask for this to happen. The thing was updated on its own. Why? Because you've already given it permission when you accepted all the terms and conditions with the app. When you gave your life to Jesus, you gave him permission to update you. At any point that he wanted to throughout the duration of your time here on earth. Here's what it says in Philippians chapter number one, verse number six. And I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. The man that started the work is the one that continues the work is the one that ends that work. And when did this work start? It didn't just start this year. You didn't give him permission on January 1st in a New Year's resolution. Okay, God, you can finally start something. (laughs) God started something with you the day you said yes to walking with Jesus. God started something with you the moment that you said, I surrender all. You know that worship service you were in and you were like, Lord. Whatever you want to do, I'll do it. You know how y'all get when y'all watching YouTube videos of Maverick City and all these different, you know, the 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 belonging co, co and y'all being worship. Oh, do it, Lord. And he starts to download. Then you're like, don't do that. No, Lord. Stop it. No, he's already started it. And the moment he started it, he guarantees you, I'll finish it. So wherever you find yourself right now, you need to understand this is not where you're going to stay. No matter where you find your life right now, no matter where you find your faith right now, no matter if you feel like you're closer to God than you've ever been, guess what? He has something for you to get closer. If you feel far from God, guess what? He has something to bring you near. He's starting something. He's going to finish it. Behold, I will do a new thing. He's already started something in you. Which brings us to point number two. Please write this down. Can you see it? Can you see it, though? Because a lot of times we can get a prophetic word and we can get super happy about it. But if we don't see it in like the next 10 minutes, we get discouraged. Anybody beside me had a real hot prophetic word? I mean, they caught you way in the back. You was minding your business. Right. They, there's no way they should have saw you. And they called you up to the front. You with the with the you have on. a <laughs> Looks like a turquoise shirt. You looking past four or five people in your run. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You stand up and you stand up like, OK. And the first three words out of their mouth, you crying. Yes. The Lord said, <laughs> They didn't even tell you what he said yet. 
You ain't even finished the sentence. You already crying. I can, uh, don't even understand how you knew I was here. <laughs> then they say, come up here, come up here, come up here. There's something, there's something about you. Come up here. And you're like, <laughs> they start prophesying over you. The weight of the prophecy is getting so heavy on you, you just fall out. So you, somebody else had to take good notes for you because you don't know what the person said. You going over, you reviewing it that night. Yes, Lord, you're going to do all of that. You're going to do it, Lord. You're going to do it. Two years later. Was you lying, Jesus? None of this has come to pass at all. What's happening here? I don't know. He's doing something. But can you see it, though? Well, here's what I want you to know. If you can't see it, you're normal. If you can't see it, it's okay. Here's what it says in Psalm chapter 119, verse number 82. David writes this. My eyes are straining to see your promises come true. Anybody beside me ever been straining to see God move? You're like, Is, are you here though? <laughs> My eyes are straining to see your promises come true. When will you comfort me? David, a man after God's own heart that, that, that saw prophecies fulfilled in certain areas of his life, he was going, are you even going to come through for me? Same chapter, Psalm 119, verse number 123 says this, my eyes strain to see your rescue, to see the truth of your promise fulfilled. My eyes are straining to see your rescue, to see the truth of your promise fulfilled. I just want you to understand, if you don't see it right now, it's okay. It's okay to have a moment where you feel like it's not going to come together. It's okay to have a moment where you feel like, I don't think he's listening. It's okay to have a moment where you feel like, I don't know if he can if I can actually go another day. I don't know if this is a situation that he actually wants to respond to. Can you see it? If you're straining, it's okay. Here's what it says in 2 Kings chapter number 6, verses 15 through 17. One of my favorite passages. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elijah. Let me pause, because I just jumped into a movie that's already going on. I want to give you some context to it, just so you understand. Uh, Earlier in this particular chapter, number six, uh, uh, the king of Aram is setting up uh, plans to infiltrate and take over Israel. But every time the plan, the king makes a plan to move in on Israel, God gives the prophet Elisha a word of what they're about to do. And the king of Israel is able to maneuver his forces so that they don't wind up uh, succumbing to a sneak attack. The king of Aram is furious behind his maneuvers being exposed. And he says, find out who's doing this. They find out it's Elisha. And he says, go there and get that guy. Take care of him because this dude is dry snitching from heaven. It's really funny when God drops a dime on you. You're trying to do some dirt and God is just telling on you, okay? So uh, they, 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 they find out where he is and uh, the servant sees all of these uh, forces of Aram first. Here's Elijah's, Elisha's response. Don't be afraid. For there are more on our side than on theirs. Then Elisha prayed, O Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes. And when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. Can you see it? If you can't see it and your eyes are straining, then here's my prayer for you. Oh, Lord, open up their eyes so they can see. Oh, Lord, pop open their eyes so they can see. Oh, Jesus, open up their eyes so they'll stop complaining. 
Open up their eyes so they'll stop tripping. (laughs) Take away this short memory they have as if you haven't come through in the past, that you won't be with them in the present, that you have not already secured their future. Open up their eyes. This is the prayer we need to pray. When we're eyes, when our eyes are straining, we don't feel like the promises are going to come to pass. Open up my eyes, Lord, so I can see what you see. Open up my eyes, Lord, so I can be reminded that even when I feel like I'm surrounded on all sides, there are more with us than there are with them. It is so good. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Point number three, please write this down. Point number three. He's making a way for you. He's making a way for you. I don't know if y'all have caught on yet, but all of my points are based on the statements that God made. He says, uh, behold, I'm going to do a new thing. Then he says, can you see it? Then he says, I will make a way for you. So point number three is he's making a way for you. For you. Matter of fact, put that in first person. Say it with me. He is making a way for me. Again, a little bit louder. He is making a way for me. Say it real loud so New York can hear you. He is making a way for me. He's making a way for me right now. Psalm 77, verse number 19 says this. When my, this verse blows my mind. Psalm 77, verse 19 says this. Your road led through the sea, your pathway through the mighty waters, a pathway no one knew was there. That's so good, I got to say it again. Your road led through the Red Sea, your pathway through the mighty waters, a pathway no one knew was there. So I want you to imagine the children of Israel leave Egypt with all the money from Egypt, (laughs) walking out of Egypt with gold on their back. I mean, they came out dripping, drip, drip. They came out dripping, drip, drip. Came out dripping. Walked completely out of Egypt. He's guiding them all the way through. Make a left down this street. Now, turn this corner. I'm, I'm going I'm to take y'all up out of here. This whole, the, the whole thing of bondage you've been in, you getting out. And you walking out, and you trying to figure out where you're going, and you turn the corner, and y'all walk down through some sand, and you wind up <laughs> with a bunch of water in front of you. You start looking at Moses kind of. Did you check with him? <laughs> Are you sure he told you we supposed to come here? And like, yeah, yeah, I mean, all the directions I've been hearing lead us right here. And you're sitting here like, we're going to drown. It's about a million of us. A third of these people can't swim. We, you brought us out here to kill us. We might as well stay there. But there was a, a way that was already there. They just couldn't see it because something was covering it up. I don't know who this is for right now, but I I need to tell somebody that God has already made a way for you right now. You just can't see it because it's covered up. It might be covered up by circumstance. It might be covered up by a situation. It might be covered up by a relationship. It might be covered up from uh, financially, but there is already a way made. You just can't see it because it's covered up. And, and, and they get in front of the water, and they're like, ah, mm. And then God goes to doing what he does because they finally arrive where he told them to be. Okay, that's, that's so good. Okay, okay, okay. Ooh, ooh. I don't know who this is for right here, 
but, but, but a lot of stuff that you're asking God to make a way for, he cannot make a way because you have not uh, 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 obeyed the previous instruction he gave you to come to the place where he can show you what he's about to do. God's not going to do it for you when you arrive and it's done. God's saying, show up and you can watch me. I don't know who that's for right there. God wasn't going to split the Red Sea three days before they got there. You can't appreciate the miracle if it's already done when you get there. God's like, no, no, no. If, if, if that would have been the case, then you wouldn't be giving me glory for the situation. So I'm going to let you stand there for a minute, shed a couple of tears, spaz out. <laughs> then this wind going to start blowing. I'm going to start cutting through this water. I'm going to back this wind up. Make the, make, make the wind back this water up. And after this water splits, you're not going to go through mud. I'm going to dry the whole seabed. So that by the time you walk over it, it feels just like the ground you walked out of. And y'all will all walk across. As a matter of fact, I will sustain this miracle for as long as it takes for the slowest person among you to get across. Ah, that's good right there. God has a miracle for you that is not contingent upon you being smarter. It's not contingent on you being taller. It's not contingent upon you having more money. God's saying the miracle is benefiting even those that feel like they can't contribute to it. I'm packing it all up. So I can show you something that was already there. I just made a way for you. You got caught in the situation? Cool. No problem. I just make a way for you. You feel like you came to the end of the road? Not a problem. I'm going to just make a way for you. I think back to how we got the building that we're in, Embassy City. And uh, we were meeting in a high school. And then we actually moved into this building. We were leasing it on a Saturday night. And uh, we were meeting on Saturday nights. So our attendance dropped. Uh, by over 50 percent. And uh, but we knew God had brought us here and we were here in this building and I started getting visions of this building. I'm like, oh, we could paint the walls this color and we could paint the walls that color. And I don't know if you know this, but that's not the way a leasees are supposed to talk about a place that they're renting. When you don't own something, you just can't go to making changes or something. All right. You, you got to leave the stuff like it is. It's like whether you like it or not, it's like it's not my house. Just glad to lease it. Right. But I started getting this burden for this for this for this space. And and I'm like, oh, stop. Stop doing that. And 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 the more I would try to quench it, the, the more uh, the, the 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 Holy Spirit would would give me a burden for it. And I'm like, well, I, I can't see the, the way was covered up. The way he wanted to give us the building was covered up. It was covered up with uh, uh, another occupant. It was covered up. With another mortgage, it was covered up with another third party owner. And then he started working where I could see it. This wasn't done behind my back. He says, I'm going to let you watch the way I make for you in the situation. So we're in here six months and then the occupants come back and say, we can't continue the note on this uh, 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 building. And so we want to know if you want to buy it. And we were one year old. I don't know if you know the difference between being one year old and any other years old. But there's a distinct <laughs> thing that happens at one year old. There is no S. When you are one year old, you are just a year. <laughs> Two years, three years, four years, that sounds a little bit better. You got an S behind it. But when you one year old in a new church, here's what that translates to. You ain't got no money. <laughs> so they offered us a building and we didn't have any money. I mean, it was a great opportunity, except we didn't have no money. So we were like, I guess we got to go back to the high school where we were paying $20,000 a month to rent every single month. So I go back to our, our sending church, which is Gateway, 
And I said, hey, here's the situation we're in. We've been here for six months, but it looks like we're going to have to go back to the high school because uh, they're going to go into foreclosure and we don't have the money to buy it. And then um, uh, uh, the apostolic elder of Embassy City, uh, who is uh, Robert Morris, says, do you want that building? And I said, well, that's interesting you say that. <laughs> because God gave me a word that he was going to give us the building. I just don't know how he's going to do it. The way he's covered up, I don't know how he's going to do it. So I just imagine if we go back to the high school, bide our time, this building would just sit there for the next maybe year or two, and maybe they'll want to make a deal uh, later on. But we're going back to the high school. He said, can you recuse yourself from this meeting? And I said, what did I say? <laughs> I was just trying to apply my faith to the situation, and I get kicked out the meeting. I'm out of the meeting for 15 minutes. I come back into the meeting, I sit down, and here's what he says. He says, uh, Tim, the elders and I just started talking, and here's the conclusion we came to. You know, you're one of our spiritual sons, and you, you left dad's house, and you've been in an apartment, and you found an, a, a new house, and it's like a starter home, but you don't have enough money for a down payment, and you don't have enough money to buy it, so we're just going to buy it for you. <laughs> and I heard it, but you ever hear something? But you didn't hear it. So I was like, you know, thank you so much. Y'all are really nice. That's real. Y'all are kind. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Wow, y'all are, y'all are really nice. Y'all are really about this blessed life life. Like y'all are, y'all really take that seriously, don't you? You're so nice. You're just so nice. I think, I said thank you about 25 times because I think I was in shock. I didn't know I was in shock. So uh, uh, Pastor Robert, being the matter of fact guy he is, goes right on with the meeting. Like nothing just happened. Just gave okay, this guy to build in, and what's next on the agenda? So he's three agenda items down. That's how he's just bam. Three agenda items down. And he's like, okay, the next thing on the agenda, and all you hear is. <laughs> and he looks over at me and he goes, Tim, are you okay? And I was like, I'm okay. 15 minute delay, y'all. It took me that long for me to register how God had uncovered a pathway that was already there. He never moved us here to be Lee C's. He moved us here to own it, but he couldn't show it to me until I showed up. Somebody needs to write that down. He can't show it to you until you show up. You keep telling God to show out. He keeps telling you, show up. You keep telling God, do it. He keeps saying, you do it first. When you do your thing, I do my thing. But you got to see me do it. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that's good. I felt that. That's good. All right, we got point number one, we got point number two, we got point number three. Point number four, please write this down. He's creating a way for you. Put that, put that back in first person. He's creating a way for me. Now, there's some people out here, uh, I, I know you're watching, C3 fam, and uh, you're saying to yourself, well, you just said he's making a way. What's up with he's creating a way? Isn't that the same thing? No. <laughs> Making and creating are two different things. Okay, dos casos. Two different things. Making a way, creating a way are two totally different things. When you make something, you do it from what already exists. When you create something, you do it from something that does not exist. God's the only one that can do both. My, you know, I'm a literalist, and y'all hear me talk about that often, but my, my mom plays a huge part in making me that way uh, because if, 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 if you said something to her and it, 
it w wasn't literally contextualized, then she would correct you. So, so I remember uh, my, my younger brother would come in and say, Mama, um, uh, can you make us some chicken? And, and, and she would say, uh, I can cook <laughs> the chicken for you, um, but I did not make this chicken. <laughs> the meat was already made and cut up, and I can fry it for you or bake it for you, uh, but, but, but I'm not making it for you. Uh, and so when you think about that chicken and, and you think about the, the, the age-old riddle, what came first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken came first because he had to speak it into existence. He created a chicken. Then the chicken's just been making eggs ever since. <laughs> okay. The chicken came first, which was a creative miracle. Here's what I need you to understand. God can make a way. But if there's no way to be made, he'll just create one. God can make anything happen. But if there seems like there's no way to be made, then he'll just create one. Here's what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. New King James would say new creation, new creature. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Anybody that has come into a relationship with Jesus Christ didn't, God didn't make your heart turn to him. He created a new heart in you. Anybody beside me can, can, can say without a shadow of a doubt, before you gave your life to Christ, you were not thinking about Jesus. Like, like just, I, no, I am not saved. Not trying to do nothing right. I'm doing what I do, right? Well, here's the thing. God can create a new heart in you. Before I gave my life to Christ, I was not convicted of sin. And church culture didn't convict me of sin. The creation of a new heart convicted me of sin. What got me to start breaking old life cycles and old habits that, that, I, that I was doing in my life was not because other church people love Jesus. It was because a new heart was created on the inside of me. And out of that new heart, I said, I can't do this stuff no more. I used to enjoy it. I can't even enjoy it no more. I remember I had a disappointment early on after I gave my life to Christ within months. And because I was a new believer and real petty, um, I decided to show God, you ain't going to do this to me. So I went back to the club. And I went back to the club and I'm like, yeah, you know. That old life is familiar. I've been doing that for a long time. This new life, that's brand new. So I won't miss it that much. So I went back to the club and I tried to, you know, I tried to get back in it. You know what I'm saying? And I was on the dance floor minding my own business, chilling. And this dude walks up to me, big dude, with a drink in his hand. No, a drink in his hand. There's, there's alcohol, then there's drank, okay? With an A, it's drank. And he walks up to me. I've never seen this guy in my whole life. This guy walked up to me and he said, hey, little homie. And I'm dancing. <laughs> huh? It's a big dude. He said, hey, little homie. What's up, bro? You don't belong in here, man. I said, what? <laughs> okay. I don't belong in here? Who are you? He was like, yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? There's some people... Man, you just, bro, you just don't look like you belong here, bro. You need to go home. And I'm like, Lord, did you just use like a straight up sinner to tell me to leave the club? For real? And the conviction of the Holy Spirit hit me so hard. And, you know, I didn't want him to think I was listening to him. So <laughs> I finished the song. And as soon as the song went off, I was like. <laughs> I 
I left. I had to go. This was not my life anymore. Why? All the old was gone. A new life had begun. He didn't make a new life. He created one. Here's what it says in Deuteronomy chapter number 8, verses 15 and 16. Do not forget that he led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with his poisonous snakes and scorpions <laughs> where it was so hot and dry. This next statement just tickles me. He gave you water from the rock. Now, why did I say it with that vocal inflection? Because there's an exclamation mark behind it. And I think there needs to be that type of stress put on that last sentence because he gave you water from a rock. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Amen. Hey, girl. Are you watching this? You were thirsty in a desert with some snakes and some scorpions. It was hot and it was dry and he gave you water from a rock. Has anybody in the last 10 to 15 days gone into a convenience store and picked up any rocks out of the refrigerator section? Anybody? Pulled out any rocks from the refrigerator section, tapped on it <laughs> with a little stick and started drinking from it? They were in the middle of a desert, dying of thirst. And the remedy was walk up to this rock, pop it with your staff, Moses, and water will come out. Can you imagine this scene? First time, never been done. Moses walks up to it. Y'all thirsty, right? <laughs> Oh, Lord, please let this work. <laughs> Bam! Water starts coming out of this rock. Not like a little water faucet, you know. It's a million thirsty people in the middle of a wilderness. Water starts flooding out of this walk, rock enough for it to fully quench the thirst of everybody in the middle of a desert. He just created a miracle. He just literally made a way out of no way by creating a way. He didn't have to make it. He just created it. Here's what it says in verse number 16. I only need the first line. He fed you with manna in the wilderness, a food unknown to your ancestors. <laughs> this one gets me. All right, so water comes out of a rock and bread comes from heaven. I'm going to let that sink in. You wake up in the morning. You look out your window. I'm sorry. Let's go back to Deuteronomy. You look out of your tent. <laughs> what appears to be in the middle of a desert, snow. Until you scoop it up in your hand and you taste it and it's food to fill your belly. And it comes every morning for five days. And on the sixth day, it comes down double because they have to rest on the Sabbath. So they get a double portion on the sixth day, enough to cover them for two days. No one bakes it. There's no oven to put it in. He just says, I will give you bread for your hunger and water from a rock for your thirst. Making a way is one thing. Creating a way is completely different. And I'm here to tell you He's not a God that does either or. He is a God that can do both and. 
He is not out of options when it comes to you. He is not out of ways to bless you. You have not exhausted his ability to come through for you. So he makes and he creates. So that no matter what situation you find yourself in, he will always come through. Are you ready for the reset? It's happening whether you like it or not, so it's kind of a rhetorical question. <laughs> like whether you made a New Year's resolution or not, he's already started something new in you. Can you see it though? You still squinting? You know he'll make a way, right? You, you do know he can create a way, right? So let it happen. Even if it miss, even if it means he has to push all of your buttons to shut you down and erase every way you've been operating so that he can get you back to the way he truly called you to be. Before you downloaded all that drama, before you downloaded all that offense, before you got that virus of pride, that, that, that malware of arrogance, that, that, that bug of grudge. Twenty-one is not about the changes that are happening on the outside. It's about the reset he wants to do on the inside. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? What is the Holy Spirit saying to you through this message? Yo, C3, fam, can I just say, tell you? This reset it's going to be the best thing that happens to you this year. You might have some great things that happen to you, but the best thing that could happen to you this year is that you give God permission to allow this reset to happen in your hearts. So Holy Spirit, I pray for my brothers and sisters, your sons and daughters. I pray for those that are already near to you, open to you that this message brings them closer, that their trust in you is strengthened, that their faith in you is bold. And God, for those that are far, may, perhaps this is the first time that anyone's ever told them to watch, tune in, come over, hang out, chill at a party, I pray, Lord God, that for each and every person that is listening to this message that may not have a relationship with Jesus, that this would be the day they allow the master to reset them. If that's you, I'm telling you right now, the best thing you can do is open up your heart and believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and God raised him from the dead. If you can make that confession that Jesus Christ is Lord and God raised him from the dead, then according to Romans 10, 9, you are saved. I invite you to change your mind. A cultural term that we refer to as repent. And allow God to reset you to his settings. God, I thank you for all the people that are close and have come closer. I thank you for all the people that were far, that are now near. Thank you for people that were foreigners and now citizens. I pray, Lord God, that this reset changes us from the inside out. 
Let it be all for your glory and none of our credit. In Jesus' name.